Now we're going to be looking at dependent events. In this case, these are compound events, but the outcome of one trial affects the outcome of a subsequent trial. And so the probability of one depends on the probability of another one. And so if I were to blindly reach into this drawer and pull out a, a uh, sweater, I'm curious as to know what the probability is that it's green. And I can see I've got uh, five green and I've got five red, 10 altogether, so five out of 10, or the probability of pulling out a green sweater is one half. So there we go, I've got my green sweater, I'm all happy. These are dependent events, and so if we have these selection issues going on, this ends up being selection without replacement. I have my green cardigan, I'm not going to put it back, I want it, maybe for later. Now what's happened here is this first trial has affected the sample space of my second event in this series of compound events. So, what's the probability of getting a green and then a red cardigan in this experiment? Well, once again, we can just use our multiplication rule. And so the probability of selecting a green and then a red cardigan is equal to the probability of selecting a green cardigan. And then the next little bit of notation is the multiplop sorry, the probability of selecting a red cardigan given that I've already selected a green cardigan because selecting that green cardigan has changed the outcome, has changed the sample space of my trial. And so I have to be a little more careful here. Probability of a green cardigan, that was one half, just like it was with independent events. However, the probability of selecting a red cardigan given that I'd already selected a green cardigan is actually five ninths because there are five red cardigans still but altogether there are only nine cardigans to select from and so the probability has changed based on the probability of the first event.